80, to her sister in Rome. The constitutions had to be presented for approbation, written in Italian. Father Manuel Martinez offered to translate the text which had been prepared by the mothers, and this translation was sent to Madrid on the 20th of July. At the same time, Mother Pillar, on the advice of Father Urbaru, pointed out the need to add a declaration of submission to any changes which the sacred congregation might consider necessary, if they contain anything erroneous. Mother agreed to this, and three days later, as she says in the following letter she sent back to Rome the constitutions signed now, together with the petition begging for approbation, and the reports which had been obtained in Madrid. Madrid the 28th of July, 1886. My dear sister, the Bishop of Avila has refused to give a report, in spite of my telling him that the nuncio's secretary thinks it is all right to do so. In view of this, the ecclesiastical superior has been approached by the secretary, who offered, he has answered that the report will be here, by Friday. So, on the feast of St. Ignatius, I'll sign the constitutions and add what you want, which he approves and has written very briefly. That same day, it will go off to UDV with the reports and the lace for the sleeves. Father Velez is going there very soon. Do you need money? This father could take it to you. Mother Del Carmen is going on fairly well. She helps me now, quite a bit. She has a gift for the novices, thank God. She hardly walks at all, but she goes with them and presides at their recreation, and she gives them the exhortation in the afternoon. The church is being painted with distemper, which is cheap Don Jose. Wanted oil, which costs three times as much, but I wouldn't have it. But they say that this gets dirty very quickly. He would like to put the gas pipes and the candelabra on each pillar as soon as possible, because if they don't do the pipes now, they will have to spoil the walls afterwards. I am thinking that at the rate we are going you will be here for the inauguration. The barrier was taken down some time ago. Don Victoriano is here. He has not given his report yet. His nephew wrote telling me to ask him for it now. Perhaps he'll do it. The best friends have behaved the worst. Nothing yet from the Bishop of Valencia, but from the Bishop of Granada we had it at once. The one which everybody likes best is from Sevilla. The secretary asked me for it to present it to the ecclesiastical superior. Ampero is quite well, thank God. An embrace for you both. Your sister. 81. To her sister in Rome. Madrid. The 31st of July, 1886. My dear sister. The constitutions and the reports will go registered by the same post as this. The nuncio's secretary, poor man, brought me the ecclesiastical superiors late this morning, because he knew that I wanted to send them to you today. Mine is badly written, as I have such an unsteady hand I cannot keep the letters equal but it is good enough. The secretary says there is no need for anyone but myself to sign them. I asked him that several times. As you will see the reports that are missing are those that we least expected, but the secretary says that it does not matter. Rather, he would only like to have them from places where we have houses. He is going there very soon, and he has asked for your address so he can go to see you. He also wants to know the name of the person who will hand over the constitutions and the one who will receive them. I think he wants to put in a good word for them, as it is a matter he has so much at heart. He seemed rather displeased at not taking them himself, and I hesitated a bit whether to give them to him. But I decided to send them, and to tell you this, and you can do what you like. He is going soon, so please tell me the names which I have said he wants to know, as soon as you have them. I'll write more tomorrow, I want this to go with the constitutions. Maria del Carmen is not worse, she helps me from her bed. Today we got her up and carried her to the novitiate. She is sitting on a mattress with her legs stretched out. Father Velez has said mass for us, and yesterday at our noon Fineota gave us a talk. He asked to be remembered to you very warmly. An embrace for you both. Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. This is how the envelope has to be written, in the secretary's own hand. Eighty-two, to Doña Ramona Vegas de Perez. 
The constitutions were presented to the sacred congregation on Friday the 6th of August, and a few days later Mother Foundress sent in certain facts pertaining to the state of the institute which had been requested. Although she was now freed from the pressure of preparing the rules, she was still kept busy with the novitiate, the work of the church, and a series of other affairs. Besides, she followed with interest all that the mothers in Rome were doing. They had stayed there to seek to expedite the necessary negotiations and she helped them when they needed it and guided their efforts. Madrid, the 6th of October, 1886. My dear Maria Ramona, I did not know anything about the death of your brother-in-law without the sacraments. What a great sorrow. People will weep for his loss, but not for that misfortune, Ramona. If only they would cry on this account and realize that this has been the real sorrow. Manuel told me that you still go on the same as ever with your church and pious practices. Never omit them and make your house a lightning conductor to protect that unfortunate town. He also tells me that no one has told you about the arrival of the mattresses. I did write to you at once, because even when I haven't a minute, if necessary I lose some sleep rather than not show my gratitude. I have a lot to do, no one has the faintest idea how much. But as it is all for the glory of God and of the Divine Heart, I not only don't get tired, but I could wish I did not have to eat or sleep, so as not to interrupt my work. I am going to confession, pray for me, I do for you. Your friend in the Sacred Heart, Mary of the Sacred Heart. Has Roselli died? Eighty three. To His Lordship Marcelo Spinola in Malaga. Mother Foundress had delayed writing to daughter Spinola as Mother Pillar wanted. But about October Don Ramon Porras came to know of the existence of the congregation founded by this bishop, and in agreement with Don Juan Vecas he formed a plan to amalgamate it with the institute founded by his sisters. Without even consulting them, they both began to take the necessary steps. Quite unaware of what was going on, the mothers were thinking about that time of opening a house in Malaga where Dr. Spinola was then Bishop Ortega S.J. who was helping them had to inform them of the objections raised by the bishop and then Mother Foundress decided to write this letter to him. With great tact and integrity she tells him all that has happened since the middle of the previous year. Madrid, December 1886 My Lord, For some time I have been wanting to write to your Lordship but I have not done so for fear of troubling you. But after what Father Ortega tells me of your Lordship's reaction to our proposal for a foundation of a house of our institute in your city, I can no longer postpone this honor. He tells me there is an obstacle in the name that we bear. I have not answered Father yet on this point, because I wanted to write first to your Lordship more to give you another proof of our sincere conduct than on account of the business of our foundation. I wish with all my heart that I had the means to eliminate the difficulty which your Lordship finds in the proposed foundation. One reason, among others, for my wanting to make this foundation, is the great desire shown for some time by the fathers for us to have a house there. As far as it lay with me, I did not want to leave undone anything which I knew to be conducive to the greater glory of God and of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and that impediment never occurred to me. I was also unaware that your institute was established in the same city. For our part we have been trying for the last 18 months to keep our old name. We have exhausted all possible means, and to my great sorrow have attained nothing. Everything we did on this point was, very badly received in Rome. For your greater satisfaction, I wish to inform your Lordship, with all confidence and sincerity, of the steps which have been taken in this affair. A document was sent from Rome to our Bishop which stated that the fact that we bore a name which could be contused with that of an older institute already approved by the church was an obstacle to the approbation of our rules. It said the name must be changed, and we should choose another. We answered at the end of October last year, giving various reasons why we should be allowed to keep our name, because of the harm such a change would do to our congregation, which has been known by it here for several years, as well as in the other places to which it has extended. 
But as was our duty, we submitted to whatever the Holy See might think fit to decide, proposing as we had been asked, several other names in case we were not allowed to keep our own. Among the names we suggested was Handmaid's Esclavus, not knowing at that time that the institute founded by your lordship had that name. Our desires were not fulfilled, and a laudatory brief was sent to us bearing the name chosen by the sacred congregation of bishops and regulars, Handmaids of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, but without any change in the end or object of our congregation. By this time we had learned that the institute founded by your lordship bore this same name, so on this account we made further statements to the Holy See, interesting the apostolic nunciature on our behalf. We pointed out that there was an institute already in Spain with the same name, founded by a virtuous and highly respected prelate. But these efforts had no more effect than the previous ones. We were given the answer that when this institute was presented for the approbation of the Holy See it would have to undergo the same change of name as we had done. In view of this, and moved by the esteem which I have for your lordship as well as for the worthy foundress of your institute, I allowed one of our sisters, a cousin of the said Da, Celia Mendez, to tell her what had happened, thinking thought it desirable you might do something about it on your part. I did not contact your lordship directly as I would have liked to do, so as not to trouble you. In reply the superior told us to go on with the negotiations in Rome, as she was doing at the same time. But we told her that we had used all the possible means to this end, which we have so much at heart, without any result at all. And now with the arrival of the laudatory brief we had lost all hope. At the same time I pointed out to her that neither now nor in the future had she any opposition to fear on our part in this matter, and that she could take all suitable measures to this end on behalf of your institute. And now wish to confirm this to your lordship, providing, of course, that nothing is done which could have any harmful effect on our own, a thing which is not even to be thought of, dealing as we are with such a worthy and venerable prelate. I wish also to use this occasion to give your lordship as you desire an apology for the proposal of amalgamating the two institutes which was made without my knowledge. I am very sorry about this, not by any means because I do not consider it an honor for us, for indeed, I esteem and honor as it truly deserves, the institute which your lordship so worthily governs. Not only was this step taken without my knowledge, but I know that when our lord raised up your institute, he certainly meant it to expand and to give him much glory in his holy church. At the same time, we must not fail to recognize that divine providence also blesses ours, as can be seen clearly by the increase and development which he has given it. We now have five well-established and well-ordered houses, and thirty-six novices, all of which should cause us to bless and thank our Lord who helps us so visibly. I shall write to Father Ortega saying the same as I have said to your Lordship that we have found no means to avoid this difficulty which is a hindrance to the proposed foundation, so that he may make it known to your Lordship. I am in any case very grateful to your Lordship for the kindness you have shown us etc. Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Eighty-four. To her sister in Rome, M. Pillar had written to Mother Foundress a week before, telling her that the rules were still held up in the possession of the consultor who, overwhelmed with other business, kept putting them off and making all the excuses he could. The visit of Monsignor Segna to the Madrid house gave Mother Inez chance to ask him to urge the business toward. Madrid. The 22nd of December 1886. My dear sister, I have been wanting to write to you since Sunday and have been unable to do so. That same afternoon the auditor was here to ask me if there was any news about the rules, because now with the excuse of greeting the cardinal pro-prefect he could spur him on a little. He was just like a father, the dear man, showing so much interest. I told him what you had said about the consultor, and he took the initiative and said he would recommend them again in earnest. I asked him about his going to Rome, but he did not answer affirmatively. He said that wherever he was, in Italy or in any other part of the world, we could count on him for everything, and he would do it with great pleasure, both for the sake of the congregation which he loves with a special affection, and for the sake of Father Cotnilla R.P. He asked me how many novices we have, I told him thirty-six, but I think they are only thirty-five, he asked about the length and width of the church, 
and the date of the inauguration, and I told him I thought it would be for the purification. He also said, I think, that consultor was an honorary title, that each order has won, but I did not understand this properly, because I thought that he did not check the rules, but afterwards it seemed that he does. Really I did not understand, and I did not ask more questions because by then he was going. I wrote to the Bishop of Malaga through Father Ortega, if possible I want to send a copy. The church will not even be ready for the purification, it's the painter's fault and the architect is to blame for wanting pictures at all. Seeing what was going to happen I made a contract with the painter to be on the safe side he drew up the terms. If the whole sanctuary is not finished by 10 he is obliged to lower the price by 500 reals each week the work continues. So, as they are already two weeks late, we now have 1,000 credit, and I don't know, if things go on as they are, whether we'll have to give him a penny. The altar, pulpit, frieze of the church and tribunes, choir etc. are all of wood imitation oak, very lovely and dignified. Tell me if they use a cloth on the pulpit there. Some sisters here say they do, others say they don't, it is old-fashioned. One of the young girls sent by Father Gomez has given us 1,000 pesetas for the curtains. They have bought two pairs for 250 pesetas, dark red plush, with a border all round, and large sprays in the corners, embroidered in a new style with gold and colored cord. They are beautiful and attractive, the latest fashion. So with 3,000 reels there is some over for something else. When they are up they are going to look grand. At the time when this sister took the habit her elder sister was burnt, they believed she would be coming too, poor dear. Her father has also sent us about 25 pounds of chocolate and sweets for Christmas, and he promised me, when he was here, that he would help us if we make a foundation in Dr. Marcelo Spinola see the preceding letter. Vittoria. I don't know how we are going to get out of that foundation, because Father Hidalgo is very keen, according to visitation, but he doesn't say anything to me. If we could I would like one in Granada. But as you said, I should not reject the idea of Vittoria completely, we accepted the houses for some time in the future. Odd will settle it. The bishop was here yesterday. At first he was not too pleasant, but not too bad, either, he was all right. But afterwards, when he saw the novices you could see how pleased he was, really they are a delight, so healthy looking, so happy, and at the same time they keep their eyes down, because I reminded them the other day that they should be like that when he comes, he wants to come and say the first mass. I didn't even have to ask him, because when one of the sisters gave a gentle hint he said, yes, with great pleasure. I felt sorry as I always do when I speak to him because he doesn't care much for the Jesuit fathers. He does not even mention Father Cotnilla. I always do and show my affection for him. So he never lets me see any displeasure at knowing the fathers come, no, he does not do that, it seems that the one he likes most is Father Sanz. Maria del Carmen's good leg is getting like the other now. I am thinking of taking her to the hospital one of these days. Even so, she hardly kneels down at ale. Turissima, pray that those two jewels who are ready in Saragossa will give in completely. The novices are going on very well, and they are being well tried. Aurora is going because she cannot put up with so much observance and obedience. Carmen Menenez, because this is what the saints did whom you read about in books. Look at that, what a consolation. They were all delighted yesterday after the bishop's talk, because the kind of things he mentioned do not happen here. Yesterday, the Lario's mother sent you a magnificent box of raisins, at least the messenger said they were for you. They'll go to the nuncio or to the bishop write to her kindly, thanking her. Don Fulgencio has sent two turkeys today, and about one and a half cup of chickpeas, may God reward them all. All are well. An embrace from your sister, Mary of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. They are very keen on sending Christmas greetings there. I forgot the chief thing. Three or four days ago, I sent you the petition asking permission for the faithful to receive Holy Communion with the authorization of the bishop. Yesterday, I was told that his lordship had only asked for 20 people because it was too much to ask for all the faithful on account of the disorder which might be caused. I tell you this for your guidance in case you have not yet presented the petition. As it was in Latin and I sent it in a hurry, I did not notice it and it was not translated for me. Eighty-five. To her sister in Rome. 
On the 29th of January, the Secretary of the Sacred Congregation of Bishops and Regulars communicated to Mother Pillar and Purissima the news that on the previous evening the Holy Father had granted the definitive approbation of the Institute and the approbation of the Constitutions for seven years as a period of trial. The decree had only to be published, and he promised to dispatch it during the following week. At 3.30 in the afternoon they telegraphed the longed-for news to Madrid, and Mother tells her sister in this letter the impression it made on them all. They were asking permission for the faithful to receive Holy Communion at the Midnight Mass. Mother Purissima had been taken ill 13 days before, and got up for the first time on 30. For this reason Mother Pillar proposed not to begin their return journey until she had completely recovered. Mother Foundress reminds her of the desire expressed some time before, Idonisidro Ortiz, that they should stay in his house at St. Jean, on their way to Spain, she was glad that they could please him. Madrid The 31st of January 1887 My dear sister, On Saturday at 5.30 in the afternoon we received your telegram with great joy. As we were still in the office, when we had gathered all the sisters we sang the The Diem, Magnificat and the Laudate. It was not so much singing as shouting the joy which all the singers felt. Afterwards I gave them half an hour's recreation so that they could let off steam. We shall still go on praying and doing a practice which Afar Hidalgo recommended to us some days ago, until we know that you have the brief in your hands. I am sorry that Purissima has been ill, it's the time of the year for that, I hope that she is quite well by now please God. I wrote to Father Provincial asking for fathers to preach the Triduum of Carnival, but he could not let me have any. This was about 10 or 12 days ago. If it is certain that the church will be inaugurated then, and if the brief has been issued, I hope that some will come. I don't dare to start anything until we see, but that would be the best time for the inauguration. I have been wondering if it would be advisable to advertise the opening of the church. But whether we advertise or not you'll say, we could ask a father for a short article speaking of our end, and of the reason for the change of name, because no one is going to know who these handmaids Esclavas are, or else we should be silent altogether. When this is known I expect a great increase in the Institute. Everyone is very well, thank God. I have no objection to the work being done in Cordova, I think it is necessary. Maria del Carmen's father is very ill, with his usual illness, but he is not likely to die. Father Manuel's procurator, has 1,000 reals for you. I am quite worried about you, as you are always afraid of being short of money. You know how keen Don Isidro is for you to go to his house for two or three days, I think two would be enough. If possible I would like you two to be here for the inauguration, because I don't know much about these things. I think that when the approbation is given they will grant us favor and privileges, as is the custom. Father had only don't really know, I cannot ask for anything. An embrace for each of you. Your sister Val is most grateful for that favor for her family. Eighty-six. To Mother Maria de la Paz. Madrid. No certain day. My dear Maria de la Paz. You will never have peace within yourself until you succeed in killing your own will. Don't have any other will in anything but that of God our Lord and that of your superiors, and you will be very happy. I assure you of that. The death of our own will fills the heart with Joe, because then you do nothing but what God wants, in him you live and reign as in his house, with complete rest and peace. Crush your own desires, but gently, and I assure you that you will feel God within you. When you are worked up you send him far away from you. I will ask St. Joseph to obtain this precious grace for you. Yours in him Mary of the Sacred Heart. 87. To Mother Felisa de Jesus in Bilbao. The sister to whom this letter was addressed in the world Natividad Delgado y Garcia had left the novitiate less than two months before. Naturally, she felt the effects of the change on leaving the recollection of the house of formation to look after the children in the school of Bilbao. Madrid. The 12th of June 1887. My very dear sister Felisa, I am very grateful for your greeting and for the prayers which you have offered and which you promise. What I don't like is that you wish me such a long life. 
Do you want me to be deprived for such a long time of the sight of our Lord? Please, not that, for the love of God. Although I am in a hurry, I am going to write you a little word as you want. That sadness is from the devil and is the cause of your dryness and darkness. Conform yourself to the will of God, and peace and joy of spirit will come back to you. Don't be upset by these dislikes. It is natural that you should go through the state you are now in. As soon as you become joyful again, you will like everything, and you will look at the children specially, not as the inconsequent little beings which they are by nature, but with the interest with which one looks at something very precious, for each soul has cost the blood of God himself. Whatever you do for them, our Lord receives as done to him. Pray much for them to the Sacred Heart, and concern yourself about them as members of his body. I cannot write more now, I like to see you very courageous. An embrace from yours in Jesus, Mary of the Sacred Heart. Your family has not written, and I don't know anything about them. Eighty-eight. To Mother Maria del Salvador in Bilbao. Ever since the foundation, which took place on the 5th of February, 1886, the community in Bilbao had been very badly installed in the basement and ground floor of No. 38 in the Cal de San Francisco. They had to be satisfied with that unsuitable house in a very poor district in order to get into the city at all, for the people were not willing to admit new religious institutes. Mother Foundress was longing for the day when she would see her daughters better accommodated in a place where the chapel would be more accessible to the faithful. They had the advantage of being near the residence of the Fathers of the Society of Jesus, but this did not compensate for the inconveniences. Mother Foundress writes to the superior impressing on her the need to try to find a way of moving out of there. Madrid The 23rd of June 1887 my dear Ma del Salvador, there must be no news about the land as you don't write, but you could have let me know something, if they have answered or not. I am more convinced each day that our houses should not be in out-of-the-way districts because of the worship of the Blessed Sacrament. They had a triduum for the Blessed Trinity and one for the Sacred Heart in Jerez, and someone who came from there told me that no one had gone to it. Only about a dozen people on the last day, the feast, when a sermon was preached by Father Cadenas and hardly a soul during the day or at Mass or Benediction each day. If they were in the center it would be quite another story. I see what you mean about the Fathers helping us more, because we are in that district, but the day when they go to live farther away, you will see. Sometimes it occurs to me perhaps in Bilbao there might be some big house belonging to one of those families who have built villas. That might be a better proposition and one which appeals to me even more when I think how dear the land is there and how much you have to pay for the house and for living surrounded by people. According to what you say, everyone has withdrawn. These are friends, just what happened here when there was work to be done. But don't let this upset you. These are the first stones of the building. You have already begun it. The more sorrows, contempt and neglect, the more beautiful it will be later on. Don't be discouraged, rather let these trials encourage you. Pray with more confidence, and without making a nuisance of yourself, use all the means you think suitable. You will see when you least expect it, how you get everything you need. You will have received a letter from me in which I spoke about the girl who said she was recommended by the visitation nuns. The superior tells me that they have said, nothing to her. If you don't dislike her you may admit her, because as she did not take the habit it is not against the rule. And what about the one who is a trained teacher, and can play and sing? I don't know, either, what was decided about the Oshindiano girl. You don't say anything about how Lewis gets on in her charge, badly or well, I am sorry about Camilla's illness, poor dear. Take care of her as I know you do, and if she goes to heaven, she's the happy one. Don't be troubled, we are born to die. Is Inacute's ill? Write to Cicitor Rivas and ask what is happening about the business. You could add that if it is not possible for him to make it a gift, you hope he will tell you the price of the land, and in how many installments you could pay for it. You could write it all in one letter if you like, but if not, write again when he says no. If he says yes, there is nothing more to say. The state in which you find your soul is partly the effect of a great deal of false humility. It makes you sad when you don't see your desires turning out well. Be truly humble, and contradictions will not sadden you, 
rather they will give you Joe, because it is a sign that God wants to strip you of yourself so that you may receive all that he sends you with gratitude, without any mixture of natural feelings. How are you off for money? Do you receive any alms? Louisa is very much improved, we are quite pleased with her. Everyone here is well. I embrace everybody in your self with much love. I never forget to pray very much for you. Yours in Jesus Mary of the Sacred Heart. Eighty nine. To her sister in Jeras, Madrid, the twenty sixth of June, eighteen eighty seven. My dear sister, I received a letter from you today, and another one. This business of the foundation in Vittoria must be settled with Fr. Hidalgo and then let that man give his houses to other religious. But I warn you that you must treat father very tactfully, still more so as I am not the one speaking to him. You can explain to him that the reason for refusing is that this foundation offers very few advantages for us, because the houses are so bad, etc. And above all that we think it much more important to have a foundation in Rome. Luisa Menenez entered the 3rd of May and took the habit on the 13th of November. We have to prepare people for that and not give in until we have attained it. He will like that and it will sweeten the bitterness he is bound to feel if we don't accept the foundation in Victoria. Today, Maria del Salvador writes to me, distressed about the house in which they are living. People make such a noise on the very doorstep with their dances that she says she is ashamed and the smell of wine reaches right up to the chapel. We must decide to get these poor dears out of that situation. I don't expect they will be given anything there. I think something would be done if you went there and stirred them up a bit. We could spend 12,000 duros. Think about it, and if you really are not needed there, now that not many people are going, and there will be still less as the summer goes on, make the best of these months to see if you can get them a house. She. Maria del Salvador also told me in confidence, as a great secret, that a father had told her that they are doing extraordinary penances because the Holy Father wanted to make some of the fathers of the society cardinals. It made me want to cry, in spite of thinking it might even be advantageous to us, if it is true. Father Morot mentioned four young girls of the very best whom he wants to send here. He is in retreat now. Consolation is trying to get her sister, Maria, to come. Father Alonso is her confessor. An embrace from your sister. We think you should write on a sheet of paper as follows. I give my vote that sister should make her first vase and sign it, then send it direct to Maria del Carmen. Letter number 90. To her sister in Jeros. Once the approbation of the Institute had been obtained from the Holy See, and that of the Constitutions for some years' trial, they began to think that those religious who had made their vows five years before should now make their perpetual profession, in accordance with what was laid down by the Constitutions. However, they had first to make one month's retreat. Following the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius, and Mother sought an opportunity to be the first to do this. Her director, Father Hidalgo usually went away from Madrid during the summer, so she thought of finding another father who could guide her retreat, but finally she postponed it until the month of May. In this letter, as in various others, Mother Foundress expresses that the different opinions she held of Father Hidalgo according. Whether he was dealing with spiritual matters, or with government, or with temporal affairs. Madrid, the 12th of June, 1887. My dear sister, Maria Fernanda is well, thanks be to God. I thought that Father Hidalgo would say something. I have told you before what he was like, just as I assure you, there is no one like him for spiritual matters, I am guided by Father Alarkin, and I find a great difference on this point. On the other hand, he is very prudent in other things. Now, that I am on the subject, I have thought several times that the best occasion for me to make the month's retreat would be now, as the work will not be finished. I could make use of the time. But where? It is impossible here, because I would have no peace, and no father to direct it. We are so far out here that it would not be easy for anyone to commit himself for such a long time, and besides, there is no one here, in Madrid, who really satisfies me. It has sometimes occurred to me, and I don't know if it is absurd, 
that I might spend this month of retreat in the house of the religious of the Sacred Heart, with another sister, of course, in a room apart from them. Then I would be near the father's school, and there they have some good fathers. As there are no children there now, it might be easy. I don't like it much, still less when the moment comes, but I don't see any other way. Saint Ignatius retired to Rome, to a Franciscan convent. Then, when I have finished the month, the work here will be completed, and the sisters can come to this house as we thought before. Tell me what you think. We shall not commit ourselves to anything in Bilba which might do harm to the congregation, and very soon, we'll see the solution of what I mentioned to you. There you or I will have to go there shortly, because I noticed something about the fathers, a certain aloofness, even in the matter of vocations, and there are no alms there at all. Father Gill was here on Sunday, he comes from Porto to take the waters of Panticosa, and to see Neves and Laredo. He was very kind, and the conversation turned on Kazel. I asked him how it was that she had gone to be a religious, sent by Father Cabra, when he had put her off entering here. Just a few words to the point. Then he began to praise Father Cabra very much. He said that he defends us, he had heard him the other day. Well, from what I understood, they were telling a fine tale about us, and he said, they are approved by Rome, there is nothing more to say. He has some influence there, so I understand. It does not worry me, for not a leaf of the tree moves unless God wills it, and if God wants us to have this punishment, let us welcome it. But so as to get the better of the devil, I had to make friends by inviting him to give the retreat. Do you think that Magdalena can be left alone asterisk it would not be a crime for me to know everything that Father Hidalgo said and says, and I should be very pleased. An embrace for you and for all from your sister. Mary of the Sacred Heart. They have come to offer us the church in Granada, and besides, they will let us have the house for half its price. The way is made smooth where we don't want to go, and where we want to go, it's closed to us.